Okay, brilliant. So um, thank you for joining us today. This is the first in a series of what we're calling Learning Together events. So, so we have another one next week and we're going to have um, a couple in July as well. So hopefully you'll be inspired to join in that to join us for those as well. Um, the aim of the events is to provide people with an understanding of different aspects of what goes into developing community-led housing. Um, today, over the next hour or so, is our introductory session where we introduce you to the concept um, and how the Communities Creating Homes Project is the hub for advice, specialist support and information about community-led housing in Wales can work with you to explore and make any ideas you have a reality. So we're funded by um, the Nationwide Foundation and Welsh Government and we also work with DTA Wales. I believe um, Nicola, my colleague from DTA Wales, might be on the call with us today as well, which is great to have, um, to have her here. And what we're working towards, as you can see on the screen there, is um, creating a vision of um, a thriving community-led housing movement in Wales. And the aim of that is to increase the supply of affordable, good quality homes with what people need at the heart of any development. Let's just change my screen and hopefully um, you can all see that. So when we say community-led housing, what do we mean? Well, at the core, is the role of the community, local people taking a lead in and lasting role in creating secure, affordable homes and strengthening their community. What it isn't about is people having housing done to them, seeing new developments happening with housing they can't access, isn't affordable, and in some cases changes the character of where they live. What's exciting about community-led housing is that no two ideas are the same. And, you know, we've got the people we've got on the call today, you're all going to have different ideas about what community-led housing is, what it means to you, what you might want to achieve yourself. So, um, so absolutely no two ideas that we come across are the same. Same, the same as individuals we don't all want to live in the same way in the same type of housing but the principles of wanting to live somewhere where we can afford and is safe and secure is absolutely universal outside of that we all have different needs and ambitions for where and how we want to live so community-led housing may include people coming together to build new homes and refurbishing and bringing back into use empty houses or buildings, or even taking on the management of and safeguarding of existing homes. So this could be done in partnership with local organisations such as housing associations, but it could also be about proactive members of the community doing it completely to themselves for themselves. What is key is that the residents of community-led housing have an integral and long-term role in what that housing looks like, how it's managed and how it changes and evolves over time. So it really is about the residents having a say in that housing. So it's not just about a group of individuals coming along and building some homes and then, um, and then sort of leaving them to it really. The residents should know what it's all about, know that it's community-led housing and also have a say in the future of those homes as well and how it evolves over time. Um, I, I didn't mention at the beginning as well, if you do have any questions, please do um, enter them into the chat and I'll address those at the end or as we go along as well. So there will be time at the end. We're going to have a short breakout group as well. So just to um, just to put that in there, I don't think I covered that at the beginning. So um, so what does it look like? Well, the question, I'd throw that question back and <laughs> kind of say, what do you want it to look like? One of the questions that I like to ask someone who makes an inquiry and first starts talking about community-led housing is based on their initial idea and in an ideal world, what would be the best scenario for them to end up with? And that's where the work starts. One size doesn't fit all. Any options for developing community-led housing may include a group of like-minded people, 
buying and sharing a house and making the household decisions together. Leaseholders coming together to manage their own homes instead of a landlord, so they're more in control of the services they need. People developing sustainable eco communities in line with their shared values, wanting to be kinder to the environment. Um, people wanting to build their own homes because they can't get what they need, where they, you know, where they want to live, really. Um, you see that in a lot of communities where maybe there's a high percentage of second homes and holiday homes and local people can't afford to actually live in a community where, where they grew up and where they work. Um, so, so that can be, that can be a, a big part of community-led housing. Um, so you've got communities bringing empty homes back into use, um, providing, you know, it's all about providing much needed affordable homes. It can be solving the problem of um, empty, often dilapidated houses and buildings in an area. And a, there's also communities who take over the management of existing homes. So perhaps they're not getting the high level of service that you might expect, or they want more control over the allocation of homes, for example, or just want the satisfaction of, of being active in their community. So that's all part of um, that's all part of community-led housing. It's incredibly broad. So how can you do it? There's a number of ways to deliver community-led housing. And I'm not actually gonna go into a massive amount of detail on the approaches taken, because we'll cover that in a later Learning Together event. But in summary, there are a number of what we call models through which community-led housing is delivered. So you've got housing cooperatives, which are democratic, not-for-profit, organizations that manage homes and um, the decisions are made collectively um, by the residents so that might work for people who are sharing a home um, as I mentioned on the previous slide or it could work for a number of homes um, the cooperative could own the home or lease homes from a landlord which the cooperative then manages um, there may also be shared ownership, so when working in partnership with the housing association, residents part own, part rent their home, and um, you can often see that as um, a model for first time buyers perhaps, um, and it gives them access to the property ladder in a way that they can afford. Um, you've got tenant management organisations, or TMO, um, where where tenants come to a legal agreement with their landlord to collectively manage their own homes. So the landlord may retain some level of service provision and they will still have um, the regulatory responsibilities to meet uh, while the TMO takes over services as set out in their agreement. And that will vary from, um, from TMO to TMO. So some might deliver virtually all of the services while others may may just deliver one or two of those different services you've also got community land trusts or clts and those are community owned organizations run by their members that take ownership of land to develop housing that is affordable and and um, what's important within um, a clt is that it's affordable for the first resident of the housing, but all future residents as well. So a CLT will have an asset lock to legally protect that affordability. But um, CLTs may also develop workspaces, community facilities, or other assets that are needed by the community. You also have um, co-housing, which it might be, um, what a lot of people think of when they think of community-led housing. So co-housing is a way of bringing people together with shared values to live as a community. It's designed to encourage social contact and enhance a sense of community or neighbourhood. So, um, so many of us might live somewhere where, where we don't, you know, 
beyond a, beyond an old good morning. We don't really know our neighbours. Um, but co-housing is designed to really enhance that sense of community. Um, households will have their own private space in a co-housing scheme, but there'll also be shared spaces where people can where people can meet, socialise, eat together, share resources. Um, a co-housing community often shares essential amenities such as laundry, heating systems and even transport. And that can be part of the design of the co-housing community. So, so the cars would be parked um, outside of outside of the development, for example, there might be a pool of cars that people share rather than having having their own car. Um, there may also be features such as lower fences, um, less boundaries between gardens to encourage people to socialise together. Um, there's often, as well as having their own private space, there's often a shared house where people will will get together, maybe have relatives who've come to visit, friends who come to visit might stay in that shared house. And um, lastly there, we've got collective self-build, which sees people coming together to build their own homes. And um, this model of community-led housing covers a range of options, including building a home completely by yourselves, finishing a home that a developer has brought to a certain point, and also one planet developments, which in line with the Welsh Government policy is a way of creating zero carbon, zero waste home homes that include land-based enterprises and we have a guide on this that we'll be able to share after the event today as well. So what's it take to get started on um, a community-led housing journey? I think um, getting started on a community-led housing I housing journey really is about that initial idea that initial recognizing that there's a housing need or just wanting to think about housing and live differently to what you used to um, typically we see um, three different ways of um, community-led housing starting to happen so you get grassroots groups um, local people often embedded within a community who form a group with an aim of solving a housing problem. They may be drawn together to solve their own housing problems, such as not being able to afford to buy locally, but they may also come together because they want to live in a particular way in a specific location and share the same vision and values to achieve this. So um, a one planet development, for example, might attract um, might bring people together because they they particularly want to um, establish those land based enterprises as part of where they live, um, caring about the environment and wanting to um, live in a zero carbon way. But but also you may get a group of people who live in an area where housing is very expensive. So so they club together to um, to build their own homes. Um, so there's all sorts of there's all sorts of groups that can fall into that category. But you've, you've also got existing organisations who recognise a need for more affordable housing, who are prepared to do things differently and work with the community and make them integral to the development. So um, so this isn't necessarily housing associations. It could well be other organizations who've never looked at housing before but recognize that they have the the assets within within groups of people volunteers and and the need for affordable housing and where they are in the community they're able to help drive that forward we've also got um developer and community partnership. So a developer-led approach might be one that's taken by a housing association, local authority, or, an, or another developer who initiates the scheme. They might recruit the founder members from the community and who will then take on the long-term ownership and stewardship of that development. So you may wonder, what are the benefits of community-led housing? So um, I think I think there's obvious many obvious benefits for residents. Um, 
as a project, we've carried out research about the benefits. Um, firstly, when our project started in, in 2019, which seems a long time ago, a lot's happened since then. And, um, and also, again, last year to see how existing community-led housing residents felt, um, felt their experience was different from people not living in it not living in it during COVID. So um, we, can't, we can't hide from what's happening in, in the world really. And that community-led housing has a role in it. But both pieces of research confirmed that residents of community-led housing feel less isolated and they have more supportive networks around them. Their mental health well-being is improved and they feel happier. They have a better quality of life and this includes developing new skills by being involved in managing their properties the um sort of the development and other community activities which increases their confidence and they also benefit financially so more affordable homes means they have money for they, they have money for other things and in some cases they're sharing you know they're sharing bills they're sharing fuel costs so there's more um, financial benefits that way but it also benefits the wider community in some areas um, a community that where a community led housing development has taken place um, and given more people more control over their surroundings it's had a transformative impact including reducing antisocial behaviour, fostering a greater sense of community and also making that use of land that would not usually be developed for housing, so increasing the supply of local affordable homes. So there'll be, pocket, there'll be parcels of land that might be overlooked for development, um, perhaps, perhaps they're just considered too small. So, um, so a developer might be looking for a piece of land that um, that has the potential for 20, 30 homes, whereas a community-led housing group might well develop five homes on a piece of land that's been overlooked. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a break from um, my voice now. A big part of um, what we do, what we do as a project is about creating a space for people to talk through their plans. And um, through we do that through networks, informal meetups. So just uh, just really an informal chat um, online at the moment, unfortunately, it'd be lovely to be doing this in um, a nice room face to face with a cup of coffee. But unfortunately, we're not quite there yet. So the alternative is having some um, breakout rooms on Zoom. But um, but this is really your opportunity to to have a chat. They're not going to be recorded. So um, just just so you're aware, so you can be as can candid as you like. Um, but it's all about taking 10 minutes to chat about um, your community-led housing idea um, or, you know, what you think the benefits of community-led housing are for your community or in general to the wider community and just generally a little opportunity for you to, for you to chat about what's brought you here today. So hopefully I can set these up without it being, um, being too much trouble. So. So there you go. You should get an option that appears asking you to join um, to join a room, and that will give you that op quick opportunity to have a chat. Maybe um, maybe note down some questions um, towards the end, and myself and members of the team will do our utmost to address those for you. So you should all go off to your rooms now.
Hi everyone, I think that's everyone back from the breakout rooms now. I just really wanted to give everyone that short opportunity to chat um, is what we usually do at our networks and it gives people a chance to kind of a very short chance today um, to kind of digest what's been said and think about their housing idea um, a, a bit more. But um, I'm Rather than ask you to feedback now, I'm going to continue because we've got a lot of information to get through today. Um, but um, what I'm going to do now is tell you a little bit more about our project and, and how we can um, support people at different stages of exploring um, community-led housing. So our Communities Creating Homes project has... Um, has five stages, which we fondly call the five E's. I'm not sure if since, since um, we're coming um, up to sort of the middle of our third year now, so I'm not quite sure of the five E's, the novelty's worn off a little bit maybe, but they're um, good to sort of explain how we try to deliver the project. But we do recognise that um, the process isn't always as linear as it looks um, in this diagram, because sometimes groups do come to us at different points. And, um, but in order to, and in order to make the most of what we can provide at different stages, we may ask different things of you. And um, so it's very much about working together. The team is made up of um, accredited community led housing advisors, but like you, we're also always learning as the movement grows. And because Every idea is so different. Um, we're coming across new things all the time. Um, so our support is, is very much bespoke, which can be difficult when you're trying to communicate it over this sort of forum, really, um, often. But, um, but it is very much about working alongside you so that you can develop the skills and confidence to progress with your ideas. So at the start, we've got the engage stage. So you're here today, you've made the start. So the engage stage is working to, to, um, to a large extent to get people along here today. And um, so this is about finding out more about community-led housing by attending our events, meeting, like-minded people and starting to articulate your your ideas so our aim here is to provide resources raise awareness about community-led housing as an option to create more affordable and quality homes and um, the explore stage so um this is where you and your group start exploring how you want to move forward so this is delivered by our colleagues at dta wales so nicola will um work with you to um to match you with a mentor who will start developing a vision and a plan to help you move forward so you may be also be able to access a small grant of up to 2,500 to help your uh, group develop and take those early steps towards developing your own community-led housing scheme. So, so with the grant, that, that really is about kind of sort of the, those early stage costs really so it could be it could be around incorporation it could be around um just printing leaflets or or doing um maybe a housing needs analysis that that sort of thing really and and that will vary between group to group um, it's not just £2,500 into, into an account somewhere for you. You have to say what you're going to spend it on and provide evidence of that spend as well. And it is subject to criteria as any grant would be. Um, at the enable stage, this is about getting more into the detail, um, taking you a step forward um, from Explore. So um, things about business planning, finding a site, applying for planning permission, securing finance and funding to create the homes and communities that you want. So advisors will work with you to develop a realistic action plan. In some cases, we might commission expert consultancy, including financial modelling if required, and we'll continue to help you develop as a group. 
Um, we have resources such as business planning templates, site finding briefs. We'll deliver training and workshops to help you progress. The focus is on the viability and long-term sustainability of your idea. So our expand stage is all about how communities creating homes doesn't stop supporting you after you've moved in. We continue to support developed schemes to focus on the future, change and develop, maintain their scheme in the long term. In some cases, we've had um, groups come straight into this stage because they're already established. They may have been established for several years, but they want to talk through issues in their community community, they have ambitions to grow their community, or maybe they've been leasing land or a house from someone but actually want to take that truly into their ownership now instead of, instead of being part of a lease. And then we have um, educate and influence. So this is all about helping the movement grow. So we think community-led housing is great, obviously, and we want to see more of it. And um, this stage is all about needing groups to sign up to this to, in order to share their experiences, being cooperative and being part of helping others realise their ambitions too. So when we have our networks, meetups, we do look to get as many of our clients along to contribute as possible and kind of and and sort of influence others and tell them how how they've gone how they've gone about developing their plans and so on even groups at a very early stage sharing those experiences can be can be really 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 valuable to others and in this stage too, we're also looking at influencing government policy, creating a favourable environment for community-led housing. Behind the scenes, um, the community -led, Communities Creating Homes team responds to government consultations. We talk to housing associations and local authorities. Um, we actively respond to local authority and local planning authorities, um, local development plans. We carry out research, and I, I mentioned the research earlier, um, and we'll share that with you afterwards. It's um, published on our web website. Um, we, you know, we ask questions from our clients so we can learn lessons and continue to provide what they need going forward. And um, and as I've already said, we do rely on everyone that we work with sharing their story, contributing to research, being willing to respond to surveys and requests for information. We really, um, everyone gets feedback surveys after events, but I, I think um, as a team, we can really take pride in that we, we read those surveys, we make changes to what we do as a result as a result of those surveys as well. And we're always looking to kind of learn and improve on how we're doing, how we're doing things. So what do we need to make to create a viable um, community-led housing scheme? There's absolutely no easy answer to this question. I, I really wish it could be as easy as saying, well, if you do A, B, C and D, you're there. But it's really not because we're all unique. Our homes are all unique. Um, so, so, you know, there's, there are different, um, different things to sort of to sort of look at in terms of what creates a viable scheme. But this, this checklist can provide a starting point for that, taking the time early on to develop as a group, consider how you're going to make decisions, who has what responsibilities, and sharing the load uh, is um, a recipe for success. You know, it's not about one person taking everything on. It's about working as a community, working as a group. And, and you know, to be successful, you really need to share that load. And sometimes when someone comes along with an idea, that can be quite a difficult thing to do, to kind of surrender that control. But to truly be um, community led, you need to consider what the skills set is within the group. And, and we can help you with um, a skills audit to discover 
what talent and expertise you have in a group that you didn't know was there and help you to use um, our action planning template to assign responsibilities to different people. And also taking time out as a group to review where you are, checking your revision and setting some objectives is always going to be time well spent. Um, seeking active support from your local authority. So speak to your local authority, respond to local planning consultations. Um, you'll often find details of those on local authority websites. Ask about land, um, have a look at your local development plan, engage with the local planning authority and town and community councils, check out local local policies as well. So um, Swansea Council, for example, has a cooperative housing policy, but also Pembrokeshire National Park, which is a planning authority, uh, as well as managing the National Park has supplementary planning guidance on um, community land trusts and affordable housing. As you can imagine, um, Pembrokeshire is one of those areas in Wales that um, that has an access of um, second homes and holiday homes, and that has an impact on the affordable housing market. So it's really great to see that sort of policy there. And also, you might want to consider what working in partnership might look like for you when you agree. There can be many benefits to um, talking to a housing association and um, other developers about what a partnership would look like but this shouldn't mean compromising your vision and values so you shouldn't have to sort of um compromise your values in particular to work with a certain partner there are other options out there so so if you are seeking to partner with a housing association then it then it is about making sure that your values are in sync with one another really and that you're not going to have to surrender too much control and you can you can peacefully negotiate a partnership that works for everyone um, and also looking for a site it's, it's really easy to be seduced by a particular location or buildings and I, th I think we have seen this at early stages with groups there might be there might be a house for sale with land that looks looks wonderful we'd all we'd all want to live there but but there could be conditions on that which means that a co-housing scheme there a cooperative housing scheme or some other such scheme just wouldn't be viable and you wouldn't be able to achieve what you want to achieve there so it is about sticking to a site finding brief considering you were must haves and only committing to the site that really does have those or, or could potentially um, potentially have those for you. And also developing a realistic proposal. So a viable business plan written by the group developing the scheme is essential. So this isn't about having consultants writing a very fancy looking business plan for you. It really does have to come from the group. Um, I think to me that that that's something that's that's really important because because you are the heart and soul of, of the community. You know, the people the people who are going to be living there are the heart and soul. So it really needs it really needs to come from them. Um, as a project, we can support you with what needs to be included, um, help you identify what development costs are applicable to your, your scheme and, and drafting a long-term financial model. And any business plan that you put together should be a working document that gets reviewed and updated regularly. So it's not just something that you do to get funding. It's, it's something that, you know, that you you take down from the shelf, if you imagine the book in the shelf, and you update it, and you review it, and you say, is this, you know, is this still, is this still part of it, part of what we want to achieve? So, um, so this lovely diagram, which suddenly can look very intimidating, I think, but it's just, 
here to provide to you an indication of the steps and the community-led housing journey. So, so there's many steps and milestones and how and when those points are reached are different for every group. Um, and, and as I talked about the stages of our support and how we've organised ourselves as a project, it isn't always linear, so, so you may jump in, in terms of different stages, but it's just meant to provide you with an indication and, and sometimes progress seems painfully slow. But at other times, the group moves forward at, at a fast pace, really. So, so there may be times where you think, oh, nothing's happening. No one's, you know, everyone's gone off and they're all doing something else at the moment. But actually, they will come back and there will be stages where things slow down and there'll be stages when things um when things move forward. So I'm not going to read all of that out to you because I'm, I'm sure... I'm sure you can all see what's on, on the screen there. But I, I just see each of these as milestones, really. And, and, and moving forward from the initial idea, each milestone should be celebrated as they take you a step closer to a real community-led housing scheme. So one of the early questions we always get asked about is where money comes from for community-led housing schemes. And there aren't, unfortunately, a specific or singing or dancing community-led housing grant out there. Um, we, we, we wish there were, there was, but that doesn't mean that schemes are dead before they've even started. It's not all bad news. There is funding available for affordable housing, although, although it does take different forms and what can be accessed will vary from scheme to scheme. So there's many examples of community-led housing schemes being developed jointly with a partner across, across the UK. And we have schemes in Wales that are looking to work with local authorities and housing associations as well, and even private developers. Um, working in partnership can bring um, many benefits. So working with a housing association, for example, means that they might be able to access social housing grant to help you um, to help you develop a scheme, an affordable scheme. And even though community led housing isn't part of mainstream housing development there's a number of high street lenders that offer loans to community-led schemes so um so a scheme might often secure a development loan to build homes and refinance to a mortgage on completion it is unlikely that a commercial lender would lend the entire cost of the development and the reality for for schemes is that a mixed finance model would be required to complete their development. Of the finance options that you might want to explore appear include peer-to-peer -peer lending schemes such as loan stock, community shares, crowdfunding, and we'll provide our funding and finance fact sheet to you after today. And we're also we'll also be confirming a future session and funding and finance soon as well. Um, crowdfunding, for example, is often used in the early stages of schemes to raise awareness, um, explore ideas, cover startup costs, and, and there's online platforms to help people crowdfund. And that can also be supported by other fundraising events. Community shares is a way of raising money through the involvement of local people. So, um, someone purchasing a community shares making it they're making an investment in you and there's usually some sort of return when a share is purchased um, similarly loan stock is a means of raising money from sympathetic individuals and organizations and they'll be issued um i suppose as like a bond really um for a set period of time and an agreed return is set is um, set at the point that money is borrowed. Sorry, I'll just get my notes. So, um, so while the funding and finance environment is complicated for community-led housing, and none of us would deny that it isn't um, complicated, 
um, it's important to show through business planning and financial modelling the viability of your scheme in the long term. So that work that you put in early on is really going to help in your search for finance, um, as well as helping you understand the sort of finance that your scheme can and wants to take on. So before, um, before we open up to questions, um, and, and let you get on with you get on with your day really um i just wanted to tell you about some other events that we've got coming on so next monday at the same time we have our next learning together webinar and um, very appropriately on knowing your vision values and purpose as a community-led housing group but also um also next week we have our wales community-led housing network which focuses on climate change energy efficiency and well-being and we've um we've actually secured julie james the the minister recently appointed welsh government minister for climate change into whose remit housing now falls um is attending and she'll be speaking at the start of the event so we're all really interested to hear what she thinks about the future of community-led housing. And we'll also be confirming um, confirming some other learning together webinars that will take place between now and the end of July. Um, and, and you'll also find us on Twitter and Facebook. I'm gonna share all of these details after the event. And something that I haven't talked in depth about today um, to, we're allowing time and the amount of information that we wanted to get across to you really is um, some case studies, but I'll send you a direct link to those on our website as well. But what I'm going to do now, because I can see some people have been posting in chat, I'm actually going to stop sharing so I can see <laughs> the chat a lot more easily and keep up with what's going on in there. And um, and we'll address some questions that you might have. So, so bear with me and I'll stop sharing. Oh, that's a lot better. <laughs> and I, I know that we've um, some people have been posting in, in the chat and my colleague um, Casey has also joined us as well today. So, um, so if anyone has any questions, you're welcome to unmute yourself. And, um, and ask those now, or alternatively, you can um, post them in the, in the chat as well. So did anyone have any questions? <laughs> Silence, I've overloaded everyone with reams and reams of information, I think. <laughs> Uh, just a, a comment to make, please, Claire. Um, just for, for people like Jackie, who I know are working with other organisations as well, if it would be helpful, um, we um, anybody from the Communities Creating Homes programme would be more than happy to give a presentation, um, uh, just a sort of overview of the types of support that we can offer, if you feel that, that would be helpful for the groups that you're supporting and work with. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I've actually, I can see um, Julian's on the call today and, and over the last few months, Julian and I have talked about um, possibly giving a presentation to some of the people that he works with as well. So, so we are able to, we are able to do that. And um, it's, it's quite a difficult thing sometimes to provide that general overview because schemes are so different and ideas are very different as well. Um, so, so yeah, so today was just an attempt to kind of introduce people to the concept of, of community-led housing and certainly um, it just varies so much, so much across the board really, which is really exciting and, and constantly learning as a team from what people want to do. Does anyone have any other questions? No, silence. <laughs> that, that's absolutely fine. I can let people um, I can let people get on and, and maybe go and have some lunch. Did you have a question, Jackie? 
No, I was um, just going to say thank you. Um, that's okay. That, that, that was a lot of information, um, a lot of useful information. Um, and um, I know Michelle, I see her in the corner there, Michelle, trying to say <laughs> hello through the chat. Um, I mean, I know that she's attending on behalf of, of um, the organisation she works with and also for Bromon. That's correct, isn't it, um, Michelle? Yeah, and um, we had a great breakout session. We were talking about um, the Preston model, which Anne's, Anne's still here, Anne's involved with, which is providing a mix of commercial and affordable housing in the same building, which, you know, for the empty towns and high streets that are all over the country, seems an amazing idea and very inspirational. Yeah, I think I think that can be that can be really interesting to do that. And perhaps, you know, some schemes may build a home, a home for commercial sale to help fund other community, um, other community led housing, affordable, you know, other affordable housing as well. So I think that is it. That is an option in terms of looking at finance models. Hi, my name's Gavin. I'm, uh, as Hi, I said Gavin. on the, the the breakout, I'm a bit of an imposter because I'm actually living in England and I'm hoping to move to Wales and I'm researching community housing before we move or whether I get the balance right remains to be seen. So, you know, don't want to be part of the problem of increasing housing prices in Wales and driving locals out, but very much I, I work with a local community organisation here where I live in Reading, um, and very much understand the idea of putting the community interest first and, and working with the community to find out what the community wants as opposed to coming in and doing it to them. Um, the Preston model is really fascinating because it, I think it, it, it provides a blueprint in terms of community wealth building. Um, and, and there's a very interesting article in the NEF, the New Economics Foundation, where it talks about how one pound invested locally actually has a value of about one pound 40, one pound 45, because it stays in that local community and it has a ripple effect beyond, uh, you know, if you get in Serco to do something for you, that money sort of disappears partly offshore and partly into the big corporation. So, so I think there's a lot to be said about com combining the need for community housing and the need for community wealth building and if you've got projects that can do both that that's fantastic and i'd be very interested in in knowing if there is a list of um you know community projects community activities um that are happening uh, uh particularly in south wales because i'd like to sort of check them out and get in touch with them and find out what they're doing and, and learn more about what's happening i don't know if that list exists or something i could get hold of or if you could point me in the right direction of where i could find it we do have um, a directory of groups at different stages on our website, so we can share that with you. Um, okay, yeah, that's great. Yeah, we'll we'll share that after the. And, and sorry, I forgot to say as well. This was a fantastic. Um, uh, 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 I don't know what you call it, conference, a Zoom conference. Um, very informative and really well presented. Thank you. Really enjoyed thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's hard, it's hard to know whether you're um, overwhelming people with information or not, but hopefully um, people can watch the link back. Um, the directory that we've got covers the whole of Wales as well. It literally is a map with lots of little flags. I suppose so if people are interested in North Wales as Maggie's put in the chat they'll have those on there as well and and hopefully um some contact details where we have them ourselves right thank you might need updating which I will put on my to-do list to do <laughs> that's okay <laughs> that's okay it's always changing isn't it so um so, so we'll share that. And obviously with it being on the website, it's live and does get updated every few months or so. So brilliant, brilliant. Does anyone have any other comments or questions before we end? Let me get on. I'll yeah. definitely be looking at the Preston model. That's the second time I've heard about that now. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was going to mention that um, there seems to be um, a massive boom in people wanting to set up their own businesses on Anglesey at the moment. Um, and there are quite a few of them obviously looking for premises. 
Um, so there's been focus on new industrial units and this kind of thing. Um, but however, so uh, but there are lots of empty buildings, obviously in our in our town centres, particularly Hollyhead. So um, you know the the idea of combining the commercial and the housing, um, I think that is a really good idea, and there should be focus there because Mall CF in Hollyhead are doing lots of work on that, aren't they, Michelle? And yeah. Um, but then I, they're not looking really at residential, they're, they're looking at, um, you know, commercial um, more than anything. So we can take that back. Yeah. I, th I think there's a really interesting opportunity with community wealth building and projects like the Preston Project in, the, in terms of also preserving trades that we're losing, skills yeah. that we're losing. Um, so, so, so you actually become part of the community history as well as preserving that, uh, uh, developing that community wealth building and community housing, which is, I think, is, you know, there's skills that we are, uh, trade skills that we're definitely losing, uh, which would be a shame if we lost completely. Yeah, I think a lot, I think a lot of schemes that, that do come through talk about wanting to use local suppliers and, and so on and um, and have talked about how maybe we can get a directory of those local suppliers together but certainly um, since since the pandemic as well we've seen the high streets changing and town centres changing so so there's a lot coming out from Welsh government about town centre regeneration and um, and, and so on. So definitely really do want to see, you know, how, how we can keep some of those buildings um, within the community and, and add residential to them as well. You know, if, if, there's, if there are going, going to be less shops and offices, then, then, you know, maybe those buildings can be given to across to housing. And, and sometimes when you're looking at buildings that have a particular heritage and so on as well, it can open up other finance options. So you've got the Architectural Heritage Fund, which is about saving saving buildings, really. And there's, there's um, mm -hmm. funds that come out from um, the National Lottery Community Fund, as it's now called as well so so it's always worth it's always worth keeping those in mind but that I wouldn't start from where the money's coming from I'd start from having a consistent vision to move forward with your idea really and then and then think about the funding because otherwise people people will start sort of compromising on projects to fit particular funding schemes and it's such a shame if, if that happens, really. Okay, are there any other comments that anyone would like to add? Well, uh, just just a quick one. Um, I've made a mental note to um, look at rural, rural areas as well, not just the urban and the town centres, because we have got lots of, um, of manor houses, old manor houses, and currently they're being sold to the highest bidder and converted into holiday accommodation. Um, and, um, and we've got plenty of that. So it would be really good to have, um, you know, maybe to look at something like that. Um, with this kind of um, opportunity, this kind of model. So um, that's something that I'm definitely going to be looking at. Um, and we could um, actually, we've got some funding on um, within Mentimon that we could maybe um, have a little, uh, a little study done um, and look at what suits us more on a local level, but um, we'll definitely keep in touch with you. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, we can put, we can also put you in touch with the Rural Housing Enabler in, in that area as well. So, so we've worked with with them too. So I know um, Casey's been doing a lot of work in North Wales around Snowdonia. So not quite Anglesey, but I'm sure we can. Um, we we'd love to progress some work work with you up there, particularly looking at um, manor houses, and it'd be lovely to bring some of those into community use instead of um, going on luxury holiday accommodation. Mm -hmm. too so brilliant lovely 
Okay, I think um, I, I'll share a lot of information. I've noted down some links to share after the event as well, as well as the things that I had in mind before we even started talking. So, um, so I'll share those and we will share the obligatory um, feedback form as well. So if you can um, fill that in for us, it only takes a couple of minutes and, and just, you know, any suggestions for future events to please include those. But I'll also share the link for next week's event on knowing your vision, which follows really, really neatly from today, I think. And um, and and if you wanted to invite any colleagues or anyone else um, looking at any schemes with you along to that, then then we'd be really grateful for you sharing that link too. But also, um, you'll see details of future events on our social media. And we'll, um, we'll make sure that people are receiving our newsletters as well after today. But um, but yeah, thank you for joining us on a Monday lunchtime. I believe it's just after half term as well. So for people who've got children, um, today's probably been a bit hectic getting them back to school and so on as well. So we really appreciate you attending today and, um, and we'll share the link and further information really soon. Thanks, okay. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.